Hi, hi, Fofamit here, and welcome to part two of Avatar Class 101. Today, I'm being voiced by Tani Tenshi. You can find their Twitch and Instagram details below in the video description. So we're going to continue using the same project folder to cover today's topic, Dynamic Bone Basics. By the end of this video, you will have an avatar that has hair, breast, and clothing physics. Here's what you will need to follow along with today's tutorial. Unity Hub with Unity version 2018.4.20 F1, LTS, Dynamic Bones Unity plugin, Avatar Project Folder, or your own avatar. Even though the Dynamic Bone plugin is a paid plugin, if you plan to upload your own avatars in the future, it is practically a must-have for avatar creation and uploading. For more information on how to get started with Unity Hub with your own avatar, please see this video. If you've ever opened your avatar in Blender, you will see your avatar bones as shown here highlighted in yellow. In Unity, you won't see your avatar's bones until you apply the Dynamic Bones plugin. Instead, you will see your avatar's bones listed in the hierarchy. Let's get started adding dynamic bones to the avatar and start by adding dynamic bones to get some hair movement. First, click on your avatar and expand it in the hierarchy. Then do the same for the spine, chest, and head. There are two ways to add dynamic bones to your avatar's hair. The first way is if your avatar has the hair separated like this, where you can apply dynamic bones to each hair group separately. The second way is to apply dynamic bones to the entire head. Adding dynamic bones to the head is the easier way to get movement in the hair, but as you can see, the root of each of the bones is now the center of the head, rather than the root of the hair. We'll get a bit more into why this might cause some undesirable effects in a moment. Here, in the inspector, you will see sliders called dampening, elasticity, stiffness, and inert. By adjusting these settings, you will change how the dynamic bones move. In order to preview how the dynamic bones will move, we can hit the play button on the top and it will allow you to move your avatar around and test out your dynamic bone settings. When you press the play button, it will change your tab to the game view. You will want to change it back to the scene view. Now, in the hierarchy, select the root of your avatar and now Back to the scene, you should be able to click and move your avatar around to see how the dynamic bones will move. Here are a couple of problems we can see. The most notable is the hairs popping out of their sockets and next to the hair is stretching or pulling unnaturally. So let's go out of play mode and try to fix these issues. Go back to the hierarchy and select the head. Now go to the inspector and look for the exclusions drop down option. Here we can add a list of things connected to the root dynamic bone that we want to be excluded or cut off. Go to size, and here we're going to choose how many things we want to exclude from the dynamic bone interaction. Here, we're going to set the amount to four, and from the hierarchy, we're going to click and drag all the things we want excluded, and we'll have any dynamic bone motion. So here we're going to click and drag I, L, I, R, left eye, and right eye to the exclusion list. Going back to the play mode to preview the changes, we can see the eyes no longer move, but the hair still has that weird pulling and stretching effect. The only way to fix this problem is to apply the dynamic bone plugin to the root of each hair instead of using the head as a root for all the hairs. Better hair dynamic bones. We're going to start by removing the dynamic bones from the head. To do this, go to the head, then in the inspector, find the dynamic bones plugin, and in the top corner of the plugin, you will see a gear icon. Click on that and select remove component. Click on one of the hair roots in the hierarchy and add component and selecting dynamic bone and making sure we can click and drag the hair from the hierarchy to the inspector like in the video. Here, you can see the dynamic bone is rooted to the base of the hair instead of the head. Let's preview what this will look like by pressing the play button. 
We're no longer getting the weird stretching and pulling like we were before, but as you notice, the hair is moving a bit unnaturally and not realistically. So this means all we have to do is adjust the dynamic bone settings for the hair. Even though you can change the settings, go into play mode, see how the hair moves, then go back out of play mode, etc. The better way to do this is to instead go into play mode, go to scene, then select the hair route we're going to be adjusting. Here, you can adjust the settings and see how it affects the hair movement without changing modes. I strongly recommend playing with the different settings until you can find something you like. In this video, I found the following settings worked well. Dampening, 0.14. Elasticity, 0.024. Stiffness, 0.137. Inert, 0.04. Once you find the dynamic bone settings that you like, click on the gear icon in the dynamic bones component in the inspector and select copy component. Now, when we leave the play setting, you will see the dynamic bone settings will revert to its previous settings. But that is okay since we already copied the settings in play mode. So now, back to the inspector and clicking on the gear icon on the dynamic bones component Select Paste Component Values and all the settings will be copied over. Now, we're going to copy these values to all the other hair roots in the hierarchy. Go to each of the hair roots in the hierarchy, then select on the gear icon in the inspector and select Paste Component as New. Next, drag the hair root for each in the hierarchy and drag it to the root in the dynamic bone component in the inspector. Do this for the rest of the hair roots in the hierarchy. Now that all the hair has the dynamic bone component applied, let's see what it looks like. We can see the hair is moving much more naturally without any pulling or stretching. If your avatar has a skirt, we can also add dynamic bones to add more movement to the skirt. In some cases like this, you won't be able to apply the dynamic bone to each of the skirt bones easily. So instead, we're going to apply the dynamic bone component to the root of the skirt. In this case, it's the legs, but more commonly, it will be the hips. Like before, we will paste component values and set the root to the left leg and similar to before, we have another part of the body we don't want affected by the dynamic bone setting, we will add it to the exclusion list. Now we just need to tweak the settings to get the skirt moving the way we like. I recommend playing with these settings until you find something you like, but in this video, the settings for the skirt are dampening 0.29, elasticity, 0.043, stiffness, 0.482, inert, 0.326. Now we're going to copy this setting and do the same thing for the rest of the skirt for the right leg. Next, if you have a female model, you might want to add dynamic bones to the breasts. Usually you can find this in the hierarchy in the chest. Sometimes, you have to apply the dynamic bones to the chest or each breast individually. It really depends on how your avatar bones are set up. In this case, we can apply it to each breast. I found that just the default settings for dynamic bones works well enough. Remember to add component in the inspector. Add component, add dynamic bone, and set the breast L as the root. Here in the place setting, we can see the left breast has good enough movement with the default setting. Now, we're going to repeat the process for the right breast. Now that we have dynamic bones set for the hair, skirt, and chest, let's publish the changes to VRChat. In the top menu, go to VRChat, SDK, Show Control Panel, go to the Builder tab, and then press Build and Publish. If Build and Publish is not available, auto-fix any errors you may have. When it switches to game, agree to the terms and then press Upload.
Now, in VR Chat, we can see we now have hair, chest, and skirt physics. Next time, we're going to cover dynamic bone colliders like my avatar here, where parts of your avatar with bone dynamics will not be able to go through parts of your body. If you want to follow along this video series, you can click on the first part here. And there, you can find the avatar files you need to follow along. Also, if you're having issues with your avatar, you can join my Discord server and you can get help from our community there. Links in the description. Once again, I'm being voiced today by Tane Tenshi. You can check out her Twitch channel down below. She streams Tuesdays and Fridays, 9pm Eastern Standard Time. She also draws a lot of cute art, so I recommend checking out her Instagram link down below as well. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, I stream on Twitch and you can find more information down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye bye!